A unique feature of the MiG-15 is its armament system. Two 23-millimeter cannons and one 37-millimeter cannon are positioned beneath the air intake. Both guns and ammunition are contained in a package which can be lowered by one man. This feature greatly shortens the MiG's turnaround time, since a pre-loaded package can be slung under a returned MiG and accurately positioned almost immediately. Fortunately, the plane was delivered to the Air Force combat loaded, so armament tests could be made. When the cannons are firing, both shell casings and ammunition lengths are jettisoned. Ammunition can be fired steadily for only six seconds, as opposed to 14 seconds with the F-86. During flight tests, several air-to-water strafing runs were made to check gun sight accuracy, as well as static firing tests into a fixed target. It is interesting to note that throughout the performance tests, data obtained compared with uncanny accuracy with information previously acquired on the MiG by Air Technical Intelligence Center. The flights made by General Boyd and Major Yeager added to the knowledge that was piling up. A series of high altitude dives at high Mach numbers showed the MiG became difficult to control as speed increased, and at Mach 0.94, the aircraft became uncontrollable, pulling out only on reaching denser air. The top speed of the MiG was slightly less than the F-86 at all altitudes, although the MiG's rate of climb exceeds the F-86 at all altitudes. The MiG climbs to 45,000 feet in nine minutes, while the F-86 takes 13 minutes. During dives, the F-86 is completely controllable at speeds which render the MiG control systems useless. During an altitude test, the MiG was climbed to 55,000 feet while the F-86 could reach only 51,000 feet. In general, MiG handling characteristics at all speeds are not so good as the F-86 because of the MiG's small aileron surface and lack of elevator effectiveness. The MiG is most effective as a combat fighter at lower speeds, where its lower thrust loading allows greater maneuverability. Pilot protection on the MiG consists of an armor-plated ejection seat back of adequate thickness and the usual bulletproof glass. Fuel tanks, located in the fuselage, were not self-sealing. Oxygen and cabin temperature systems require constant pilot attention, as did most of the equipment in the plane. Pilots reported cabin temperatures as high as 42 degrees centigrade at low altitudes and below freezing temperatures at high altitudes. These extremes in working environments would seriously limit a MiG pilot's performance. At the conclusion of the tests, the tally sheet read like this. Desirable features of the MiG. One, ability of the MiG to operate over 50,000 feet. Two, high rate of climb. Three, rapid acceleration from low speeds. Four, short turning radius. Five, short takeoff and landing distance. On the undesirable side of the score sheet are these. One, loss of aircraft control at high Mach numbers. Two, loss of pilot vision due to inadequate defrosting and poor rearward visibility. Three, poor lateral directional stability at high altitudes. Four, slow rate of roll. Five, equipment requires constant pilot attention. Compared with the F-86, the MiG is an inferior, though still formidable, weapon. The 13 to 1 kill ratio of F-86s over MiGs can be attributed directly to superior planes and better trained pilots. Four days and 11 flights after the test program started, the MiG had no secrets left.